John 14, 21, please. So we're going to look at the message version for that. John 14, 21. And it reads, The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. Now that's some good stuff. He said just he said the message version say really loves me. Amen. And then it goes on to say, and whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and will show, reveal, or manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. So in other words, the scripture is saying that if we just simply do the word, that we will experience the presence of God. And I believe, saints, that that is the desire for every saint, that God, I just want to feel your presence. God, show me that you are real in my life. Amen? That's our desire. But according to scripture, if we would just simply do the word of God, we will feel and experience the presence of God. So some of you might be saying, well, how do I just do it? I mean, because if I just do it, that means I can't do me. That means I'm going to miss out on some of the stuff that I want to do. If I just do it, God, I mean, I, I'm not going to be able to do all the other stuff that I want to do, God. I'm going to miss out on some things. So the way that we just do it is get up every day intent on meditating on the Word of God. Doing it is a lifestyle. Amen? Doing the Word of God is a lifestyle. He says, study to show thyself approved, right? So as we study and we learn the Word, we have a responsibility to obey the Word. If you'd allow me to paraphrase Deuteronomy 30, 19, he said, I put before you life and death. And then he goes on to say, choose life. He's pleading with us to choose life as his ambassador I'm pleading with you to just do it. So as I was getting this message, the Holy Spirit was pleading with me, Kim, just do it. Just do the word of God. It is just that simple. Amen? So every day, according to Deuteronomy 20, 30, 19, we, get, we are to get up intentional about making a choice to just do it. God, today, I am committed to just doing your word. I am committed to just walking in your will, fulfilling the purpose for which you created me, God. I am committed to that every day. And certainly that comes with the challenges, but we have to choose to just do it. If you'd allow me, I just want to share a little story with you. Me and my kids um, were going to the movies one day, and Elijah wasn't with us, and so I decided, me, you know, we all get a little tacked, right, you know. So I was under attack this day, just so you know. I want to preface that. I decided we're going to go to the dollar store before going to the movies, and I told everybody, you know, spend $3, you know. Everybody get $3 worth of snacks. So now we're in the movie parking lot, and we're all, like, concealing our snacks, stuffing them in our purse and our coat. <laughs> Amen? Well, I don't agree with that because that wasn't okay. So one of my children, Anaya, she said, Mom, I feel convicted. I said, look at the Holy Spirit showing up on the scene. Amen? So... <laughs> I said, okay, let's stop, because this is a teachable moment. I said, baby, why do you feel convicted? She said, mom, I feel convicted because I'm concealing these snacks. So because this was a teachable moment, I turned to the other four kids. I said, what do you guys think about this? And so then Lauren stepped forward and said, you know, mom, on the um, door, it says that we are not permitted to bring any snacks or beverages into the movie theater. And so God immediately brought to my remembrance the scripture that said that we are to obey the laws of the land. Amen? So we have a responsibility to just do it. So then another one of my kids, and I won't mention the name, said, well, it just seems right. It seems like it would be okay for us to save a little money, you know, because the snacks in the movie theater, I mean, they're just too expensive. And so God brought another scripture. He said, what seems right to man will lead to death. Amen? Okay, so we have a responsibility to do the word regardless of what the temptation is. And just like Moses was telling the new generation of Israelites, you will be tempted. But you are responsible for just doing the word if you want. 
you. Amen. Amen. So there are some people in the Bible who just did what seemed right. We've been talking about Jonah for about a month. We've been loving Jonah, right? We've been loving the lesson that pastors teach us about Jonah. But Jonah tried to do what seemed right to him. He just wanted to go where he wanted to go instead of going where God instructed him to go. It seemed right to him to make a decision to take his own alternative route, right? Alternate route. It seemed right. But the end result is that he ended up in the belly of a fish. Amen. And then we have David in the book of Kings. David wanted to do what seemed right to him and have an adulterous relationship with another man's wife. It seemed right, and in order to, and in order to make it right, he just, it seemed right to him to just kill the man off, because then maybe he wouldn't be committing adultery anymore. It just seemed right. But the result of that was he lost his child to death. Amen. So what seems right, it's not okay. We have a responsibility to just do it. Do the word of God. But we can't stop there because obviously there were several in the Bible who did the word, who did the commands. There was Joseph who, um, who, was, who just done the commands that God gave him. And as a result of that, he was a blessing in Potiphar's house. Everything that he touched was just blessed. Amen? Amen. Because he didn't do what seemed right. He did what he was commanded to do. And as a result, God blessed him. There was Elijah. We've talked about Elijah recently. Elijah did follow the commandments of God. God told him to go to the brook. He went to the brook. God told him to go to the widow's house. He went to the widow's house. So he did what God told him to do. And as a result, God provided for him in the midst of a famine. So when we just do the word, God got us. Amen. He has us. You won't have to worry about anything if we just do what God has instructed us to do. So my testimony is at the age of 24, I was in my um, second year of, of grad school. I think last semester I was 24 years old. My mom was, about four, was 44 years of age, and um, I was working in the emergency room. My job really was to console families. When they came in, they experienced loss. I did some counsel with them and really consoled them and helped them through um, refer them out, you know, so they can get some follow-up care. Well, one day I was working in the emergency room, and my dad called me. My mother was not deathly ill or anything. My dad called me, and he said, Kim, your mom is just not responding. She's not looking right. I said, well, dad, just bring her into the emergency room. So when she got there, she was actually in a coma that she never recovered from. Her body totally shut down. All her systems shut down. We never found out what really, <clears throat> what, what actually happened to her. And, and so at that time, I was a Christian, but I decided that I just didn't want to do it anymore. I decided I wanted to do Kim. I was hurt, and um, I, I experienced some things that I wouldn't have experienced if I would have just done the word. So I was hurt, and, and I tried to make myself believe that it was okay just to do me for a little while. But I went some places that I should not have gone. I experienced some things that I should not have experienced because I chose to do me. But even in the midst of that, I began to recall the word of the Lord that said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, Kimberly, you are more than a conqueror through me. He said, Kimberly, in your weakest moments, I am your strength. Amen? So I recall the scripture that said, Kim, I will turn your mourning into joy. And I woke up out of my sinful state, and I began to repent. And I continued to recall the word of God. And I heard him say, Kimberly, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, Kimberly. You are mine. And, and at that time, I thought that I belonged to my mother. I thought that I was hers. But he said, Kimberly, you are mine. Amen. And then I recalled, the, um, I recalled what Jacob said to God in Genesis 32, 26. He said, as he wrestled with God, he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And then I just woke up out of that thing, and I grabbed a hold of God. And can I tell you, I haven't let go of him yet. 